actually conserve water i think that's something that lots of people don't do like even now like even though it's such a big deal like worried about the state of the nhs is creeping me out on a local level uh, the mo thing that concerns me most is the loss of our public space and uh, we live in the royal borough of kensington chelsea um, and it seems that all of our public space so our libraries our children's centers doctor surgeries adult education units are being um, handed over to those by our local council um, to uh, property developers or to private education. Um, I just want to say something about my sister who um, last year went from residential care into a supported living flat and I don't really feel that they were they'd lived in that residential accommodation for the last 25 years um, group of 13 people and I really don't feel that they were given enough consultation by the local council about whether they wish to move or whether they could actually stay um, on uh, within the premises um, that they were in um, I mean I just don't feel that their rights were really um, accessed properly actually. These days it's tougher and tougher to be black and Muslim at the same time and a woman so I don't know not looking forward to the election results it's very stressful so many people are ignorant of what's really happening and so you know in terms of voting for Labour they've just completely been brainwashed and so you hear people around you saying he's just not fit to be a leader and you're like really are you voting for him because of the way he looks or the policies that he has that might change lives for poor people and I have friends whose son is very disabled and so many cuts and it's just oh, the future does not look good and I've got children a single mom so I don't know it's very stressful and I wake up every morning and I'm like please people just vote go out there and make a difference. You know? Oh, I think we're living in a time of great change uh, and great danger. I think we have a government that is as close to fascism I've ever, ever seen in my life and I'll be 68 this year. The food issues are very important, obviously we all have to eat. It feels like it's on the edge of a tipping point and that like big change might be coming. The press. It's shit. <laughs> Corbin. <laughs> yeah. It's alright. I don't understand why the why the nation wants to self-harm. That's that's what that's what it feels like at the moment. With a landslide apparently a landslide to Tory victory, so that's not feeling too uh, optimistic, but <laughs> trying to stay positive. <laughs> no, but it's good because everybody's all of a sudden really critical mm. when they weren't run about mm. five years ago. So now everybody's like yeah. finding out stuff and educating themselves, which is a good idea, I think. We hope. We hope. Yeah. Vote. Yeah. Register to vote. Yeah. Vote. Talk to your friends. Talk to 18 to 25 year olds because there's still t 2 million people that are not registered. Yep. Um, and normally it wouldn't make too much of a difference, but this time it feels like it does. Yeah. So. This time is a lot more monumental. Yeah. yeah. You know, my mum got paid to go to uni. Uh, she came out of uni, got a job, got a flat easily. We, that we come out, we have to pay thousands of pounds to go to university, can't move out of home, you know, can't um, get a good job. You know, our generation has been shafted because of what? A financial crisis created by bankers. You know, I think history shows that when people come together, they can change things. And I think, I think with the election, it's a very important one. And we've got a choice of five more years of Theresa May, whipping up racism, uh, cutting living standards, cutting the NHS, or we can back someone like Corbyn who says that we shouldn't blame migrants, we shouldn't blame Muslims and refugees, but the problem is the people at the top of society. And I agree with that. So I think we should get out there and vote for Corbyn, but also build resistance on the ground. Riot. <laughs> Riot, demonstrate, oh, oh, yeah. make your voice heard. Do everything you can. I, think we've, I mean, we've hit a tipping point already, maybe like 30 years ago in terms of carbon and um, climate. Uh, so it seems like global collapse is imminent. The question is, will capitalism collapse first and will we help it do so. Look after your neighbours, look after your friends, if people are struggling, try and get them to talk about it, scream about it, do whatever they need to do. Well, to be honest, I find quite often I can get by in life without politics affecting me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but recently it has. I've just come to the end of my five-year visa in the UK that I got because my grandparents were born here. It's quite crazy because most countries, if your grandparents are born there, you can get a passport, but not here. So um, in two weeks, I'm out. Um, I could have got another one, but they've just put up the price because they didn't really want me to stay. Self-worth is really important, and my entire generation doesn't know this. It's like everyone is constantly 
being put to images of something they should be or being like judged for something and it's wrong you should just be who you are well i'm not very i don't think i'm very optimistic i feel like the world's gonna end soon oh uh, I, I kind of feel like i'm teetering on the edge of existential despair all the time um i think we're in uh, the darkest timeline so <laughs> yeah she's, she's bad look i think i think there's an alternative uh, an alternate uh, timeline like the universe split and we're in the bad one so <laughs> yeah basically i've just come to this band zone festival whatever it is i saw the old incident the thing that amazed me most was the uh, Hills for Justice campaign because as a working class Londoner from the 80s we knew it was a disaster at the time but we joked about it, blamed the Mickey Mouses but as time evolved everyone realised what it was all about and the truth would have never come out if it wasn't for people like the local we speaking there, Kevin Sampson who wrote the book Hills for Voices and the fanzines that was on display. I think a zine is a perfect format for the, in some form or shape, the oppressed. You know, I think um, the Tories' policies are very old-fashioned of making the rich richer and the poor poorer. Considering, you know, the state of the country and the fact that, you know, over a million people are having to go to food banks and, uh, uh, you know, migrants are getting used as scapegoats um, while people keep getting richer, uh, rich keep getting richer. So, yeah, I think um, I think it's really important to have days like this and really important to campaign against racism and uh, for like the policies Corbyn's putting out there of like free healthcare and housing for everyone. Um, I think it's a really great thing to have because yeah, I think it's nothing really radical about saying everyone should have health care when they need it and there's nothing radical about saying everyone should have a house but it's been made radical by the right wing of the government I feel like and uh, I think actually this country really needs uh, some more progressive policies that are a bit more inclusive for everyone in society and we need a bit more equality and a bit less racism. I think actually there is hope for change but we all have to actually get out on the streets and fight for it and actually get out and, and make our voices Heard, I think, and then we can actually really see some positive change. Taking a moment to just like, just reflecting more, like, like taking a deep breath and just like looking around and realizing that, like, realizing your echo chamber and trying to get out of it by just taking someone to coffee. Like, if you're a leftist, then take the time to be like, okay, I'm a leftist and I believe in my views, but I'm gonna go and listen to what this person on the right um, side of the political spectrum thinks and invite someone um, on that side for coffee and just talk about your opinions, but don't try and convince the other side to come onto your side. Just have like a civilized discussion because you're humans and that's what humans do. It's like there's all these flowers and the real bees and some flowers have nectar, some don't. It doesn't mean you just stop looking for the nectar. You keep looking for it and you might find one nectar in a field of like a million flowers that makes it worth it. And do you know what that nectar is? Art, poetry, reflection, talking like this. Anything that makes you double think about your past, present and future, that's the nectar. I must not call the Prime Minister names